So we're going to show you how to take apart a uh, Delta faucet. We're taking this whole shower out. To get the shower out, we have to have the faucet out. This little ring here or the cover plate just pops off. Then there's a Phillips screwdriver. Yeah. Pull this little set screw out. That's going to allow the temperature control to come off. And the homeowner's replacing all of the faucet here. And once that is off, this handle just comes off. Everything stays off. We have not turned the water to the house off. Uh, there's no reason to. We're not going to turn the uh, we're not going to turn the shower on. So just be really careful. You have these two screws here for the trim ring. Once these two screws are out. That should be it. Cover plate can come off, faucet's loose. We just have to be real careful when we cut the shower out of the way not to cut into the two supplies. So that's how to take the Delta faucet apart. Pulling base trim off the wall has got to be pretty delicate. We don't want to break anything. So you can see we take a utility knife to cut through the uh, caulking between the base trim and the wall. And then we carefully score the top of the base trim again to cut that caulking loose as well. And then we're going to really gently work a pry bar between the uh, sheetrock, or in this case if we have room we do it on the floor too that it keeps from poking, chance of poking hole in the drywall. We just want to be real slow, methodical, and gentle. And we find that um, we have a high chance of getting the base trim off in one piece without poking holes in it or damaging the drywall in any way either. And so we don't want to do anything that's going to cause the homeowner or us to have to do extra work to repair uh, unnecessary items that wouldn't have to be fixed if we were just careful the first time. Thanks for watching. After we have the base trim off, you can see we put a number one on the wall. This is the first piece of base to come off. There's also a corresponding one on the back of the base trim. We pull the nails with a pair of pliers through the back of the base trim. That way we don't cause any extra holes on the face of the base trim. Again, we do all this with the anticipation that we're going to reuse this. And so we don't want to have to have unnecessary holes or other items damage-wise to fix when we go putting the base trim back up when our job is complete. So be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click the bell icon if you want to keep updated. We try to post all kinds of how-to videos and things like that. And so, um, thanks for watching. We're going to do a video today on how to take out a fiberglass shower. We already took the mixing valve off. The water to the house is on, so we're going to have to be really careful. We don't want to turn the water off unnecessarily. There's nothing in our way. Uh, for purposes of the video, we drew some lines. We have our cut lines for the drywall, which we're going to use a saw for that. And then you can see the other lines for the shower. We may or may not actually use those exact lines, but we're going to take it out in a few pieces. And so we use the Sawzall to cut the shower out. We're going to want to keep the Sawzall at a nice steep angle. So we're barely cutting through the fiberglass. We don't want to cut too deep because uh, we don't know what electrical might be back there. And then we do know there's plumbing for the valve back there. Uh, and then for the drywall, to keep the mess down, we use a multi-vibrating saw. And so we'll get those out, and we'll cut it real quick, and we'll time-lapse that. So we got all the uh, drywall cut. We do it this way because there's a flange on the back side of the uh, tiled shower of the fiberglass that we want to try to make sure we get exposed so that way we're not going to damage the drywall taking this tile or the fiberglass shower out. And so it just takes a couple of seconds to go through or I guess a couple of minutes really to go through and get all this out of the way. And you can start to see now that flange that's behind there everywhere. It goes around the entire perimeter of the shower. And so we want to expose that, like I say, so we don't go tear that out. This outside corner we're going to leave uh, without cutting the drywall. And it's going to be our hope that we can cut the shower out in such a way that we can fold the shower out without messing up this corner too bad. So we can keep without having to touch up paint and touch up drywall.
a brief walkthrough on this. Again, we want to hold our sawzall pretty steep to keep the blade from going through. So we keep it at a real strong angle. We don't want to go vertical like that with the saw because if you hold it too horizontal, the blade goes in too deep and you might cut into something that you don't mean to. So we'll cut this up real quick and we'll go from there. Once the drain is cut apart, the bottom can come out. I think you got it. So that's the last of the uh, hard part. Yep. So we just about got the shower out of the way. It is not uncommon to uncover uh, nests. Even though I don't know if that's really a nest. So anyway, just about got all this out of here. We have got our fiberglass shower completely removed. You can see I mean, we just cut it up into a handful of pieces and we haul it all out. It uh, doesn't take much to be pretty clean. You know, we cut out the drywall first, kind of a brief recap here. Uh, and then we pull the fiberglass shower out after that. Um, we try to be as clean as we can. And so you can see there's a little bit of a bubble down there. And then right in here, uh, it kind of got away from us a little bit. So we will have some drywall touch up to do. Uh, on this particular job, we know the homeowner's having the bathroom painted after we're gone, but this job is irrelevant to that. We really try hard to minimize rework for us. And so it's always disappointing when stuff like this happens, but it happens and we'll fix it. So anyway, that's how you safely pull out a fiberglass shower.